Right, that's right. I will, I will refer to this as vegan technology here today, so this is going to be, going to be interesting. And, um, there we are. Roman, welcome to the Roxy Theater in San Francisco. Hi. Thank you so very, very much for helping this ardent crowd of hundreds of filmgoers. They have just finished, in large part, watching Chinatown. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that movie and about other things, but I wanted really just to thank you so much for staying up so late and doing this with the Roxy. Well, it's a pleasure. Thank you. So, uh, you, you need the notebook for that? I need, I need all the help I can get, Roman. <laughs> so, uh, tell us a little bit about Venus and Fur and what you're working on now. Well, that's exactly what I'm working on now. Venus and Fur, you probably heard about the play which was very successful on Broadway and won prizes. The, the uh, leading actress uh, won a Tony for it, and it's a comedy. And I adapted it with the author of the play, David Ives, and uh, we shot it. Now I'm about to finish the editing and starting mixing the film, and it will be ready very soon. That's great. And do you have a domestic release for the picture yet? Uh, yes, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Do you know, do you know when it will be in America? Well, this, uh, I don't know, you know, it's very difficult to tell with films made in Europe with independent movies, as you know, because we've done some together. Uh, but, uh, you know, I was not particularly preoccupied by that, you know, I just uh, uh, was happy that we had uh, French distribution, the whole production is based on that. Right, and your wife, Emmanuel, stars in the movie. Yes, she does, together with uh, Matthew Amalric, you may yes. uh, know him from the uh, um, Diving Bell and the Butterfly, in which played, uh, Emmanuel played opposite him, you know. Great. Schnabel's uh, film, which was very well received, a couple more, a couple, I think, more than three or four years ago, I'd say. Right, and after this interview, Roman, the audience is going to watch Frantic, which I believe is the first time you directed Emmanuel. Yeah, Frantic was the first time you did, yeah. It was, yeah. 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 There you go. And that's the second time, in fact. I mean, I, I worked with in the, in the, in the theatre, but on screen, that's the only films we did, as far as I remember, yeah. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about Chinatown. No, sorry, we did also uh, the um, uh, uh, Bitter Moon. The, right, that's right, you did Bitter Moon, of course. That's a part also in the ninth gate. So it's the five and fourth time, you know, I'm not counting them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me a little bit about your involvement in Chinatown at the earliest moment, in the beginning, how did you first get tangled up in that movie? Well, uh, we wanted to do something together with uh, we, I mean with Jack uh, and, um, and Robert Town. It was a bunch of friends. And, uh, and um, um, I had, but we tried a few things, it never worked somehow. Um, I was then living in Rome and one day Jack Nicholson called me and said that he has something that Robert wrote, uh, Robert Town, and that uh, Bob Evans, who was another uh, friend of our pack, uh, is very excited about it. Uh, so indeed, uh, Bob uh, Evans sent me the, the, the script. I didn't feel very much at that time like going back to to Los Angeles, it was it was not long after uh, Sharon Tate's murder, and I felt happy living in Rome. But uh, there were 
convincing me and they succeeded so I went I read the script it was quite long draft and needed uh, uh, needed lots of work but the film was done the idea was that the dialogues were terrific because Robert Tan has a, a great talent for the for dialogue I think and so um, uh, I finally got on the plane and went for that meeting in um, in um, uh, in the, 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 the state, what was what's the delicatessen called already? No, Nate Nows. Nate Nows, right. <laughs> we had a long meeting with Nate Nows <laughs> after people left. And um, the, uh, the idea was that Bob uh, town will rewrite uh, the script to get a more suitable version because I can't remember the exact number of pages, but it was not far from 200. Right. And uh, so the, 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 the long time passed before he presented that second draft. And again, uh, it was pretty long, actually. And at that point, uh, Bob Evans said that we have to sit together and just try to pull the draft which would be um, tighter and uh, more suitable again. And that's what happened. I sat with Bob for eight weeks in, uh, there was a tremendous heat in LA, I remember, in California, I should say. And we worked very hard in, uh, on, on the, the script, which finally uh, was shot. Uh, but uh, uh, not completed. We had some divergencies on a couple of things. One was with it. Uh, they should ever have, you know, go to bed together. Uh, but the other one was the ending. Yes. And so that's how it happened. Yes. And the ending of Chinatown, of course, has passed into the stuff of cinema legend, Roman. So, can you shed a little light? Yeah, I think less than exaggerate. <laughs> <laughs> tell us, tell us, the. this is your ending on the picture. Tell us... Yes, my ending, but Bob wanted to finish in some sort of happy ending. He, had, he wrote several versions. I was never happy about it. I always thought that the girl should die if, if we want to. Uh, produce something meaningful and something where uh, the uh, audience uh, feels the injustice and it should end with, with her death and not having the villain go away. You know, that's satisfactory, of course, to the, uh, to the viewer as he's sitting there watching the screen. But, you know, the, in this way, if you ask the audience at each uh, um, each uh, crossroad of the plot, which way they would like to go, they will always choose the happy uh, version and you would have no conflict from the beginning to the end. In fact, the, the film would be more or less like a music in the elevator, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you, you mustn't satisfy on that point audience, you know. They, uh, I mean, th th there would be no Greek tragedy if, you know, if the, 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 the Greek authors uh, listened to their, their audience because they must have felt the same way, that's the human nature, you know. But yes. I say, in, 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 if the love story at the beginning you ask, uh, do you want the father to agree with, the, with the, uh, loving each other? or not, they would all go for it. And if you ask at a later point whether you want the girl uh, to, 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 to uh, have an uh, incurable disease, then they would say, oh, no, please, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, God. So, Roman, the ending you shot at night in downtown Los Angeles, and uh, as so the legend goes, uh, nobody from the studio was there, and Robert Town was not there. And you simply shot your ending without... Robert, Robert, Town, Robert Town was never there. I mean, maybe a couple of times. I do remember that on the first day of shooting, we went together uh, to, to the uh, uh, 
uh, to the location that was the, the, the orchard, you know? Yes. The, the orchard scene. Right. Uh, and uh, Robert had a tremendous back pain. I mean, he couldn't sit. So we rolled him in the um, in some kind of station wagon on the stretcher. And I had terrible back pain for some reason. So they got me next to him and they transported us you know, like two zombies in the <laughs> But since uh, after that, Robert very seldom came. You know, that was, I mean, he was the head of the studio and would not come to watch the, the, the filmmakers at work. You know, he had rather other things to do. But um, on, on that day, how that ending happened, you know, we worked, that worked in that hot room, uh, who, uh, you know, who lasted eight weeks for, you know, on the script. And uh, it was very tough because on top of it, Bob was smoking the pipe and had a huge dog which lay usually on my feet under the table. And the dog was very heavy, I mean, it was a monster. It was a dog, not the monster, nevertheless. And so, but as we could not agree on that ending, among other things, other things being that love scene, uh, we, we, we had to start shooting, and it was a lucky situation where, you know, Bob uh, uh, Evans was at the same time the producer of the film. He said, we have to start, and we started without having completed the script. And I said, I know uh, we don't have the ending. So, but I said, okay, don't worry. I'll, 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 I'll come up with some ideas. And uh, it, Bob Evans was getting um, more and more preoccupied with us as, the, 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 as we progressed. And uh, uh, at some point he said, Roman, I, I, I need the ending. We must have the ending. My point was that we must have a bit of a child that has to be at least a scene in the China now that makes no sense making a film with one type of fight. Yeah. China down. But there has to be some sense in it. So I wanted at least one scene in a China town. And I wanted to make this ending in China. And as it happened, I don't know how it looks now. Uh, there was no Chinatown in, in Los Angeles you know, in the time when they shot the film. In the past, there was. Uh, Nick Silver, the uh, uh, production designer, was a wonderful man, a great friend, also part of our bunch of friends. Also, a tremendously talented fellow, you know. Tell you. His first film was uh, uh, Baby Doll. Yes. Remember that house? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, what the talent, he was 20 something, 23 or whatever. He was much older, of course, in China. <laughs> so I said to, to, to Dick, Dick, I need a Chinese street. And we went to look for some locations that could be easier adapted for. With at least they had few Chinese restaurants, you know, <laughs> and and uh, uh, that's what happened. Dick Silver very quickly made it up, add, added some Chinese uh, restaurant signs, some diners, etc. Built a Chinese street, and then I I wrote that ending.